Hello there guys, my name is Coach Shadong Stavon, but built for theme park news and welcome to a top 5 video. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different because while we're under lockdown, we can't go to the theme parks. Well, those in China have started reopening the parks and things like that, but us here in the UK, Europe, America, you know, most all the theme parks are closed. And some of them in, Amer in the Asia continent is still closed. So... We have to sort of find ways to entertain ourselves. So today's top five is going to be my top five tips for rediscovering your love for theme parks during lockdown, really. So using this lockdown period to, you know, still be around the theme park industry. So there's, I've got five tips and five sort of suggestions, maybe, as to what you could do. So this that's what this whole video is going to be about. But before I get started, before I get started... I want to give a massive, massive, massive shout out to I'm Addicted to Theme Parks, aka Zoe. She just hit yesterday 1,000 subscribers. It's an incredible milestone. I, I said in, I said in her live stream, you know, you guys know how happy I was when I hit 1,000 subscribers. So, I, you know, I really feel so happy for her, and she just she's just an amazing person. She so deserves this. Um, so I'm gonna put I'm gonna link her channel in the description down below. I'm gonna link her channel at the end of the video um, Where you can also subscribe to my channel and You can go and look at her live stream that she's doing tonight at half at Half nine. I think it is half nine uh, where she's gonna celebrate 1,000 subscribers So I would really recommend going to that live stream. I'll be watching it as well uh, And I'd really recommend you go and support her Um Make sure you go and subscribe to her. Let's get to 1,500, 2,000. Let's keep supporting these channels. So, big shout out to Amidit to Theme Parks for reaching 1,000 subs. It is an incredible milestone, and I'm so so happy for you. It couldn't have been. It couldn't have happened to a nicer person. It really couldn't. Uh, so before we get started guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Please share with your friends, your family, on social media and make sure you will get your questions in for our next Q&A session when we celebrate our next milestone of 2,000 subscribers. Make sure you use the hashtag question before or after your question. And for now guys, let's get into our top 5 suggestions or tips for how you could stay in touch with theme parks during the lockdown period. So tip number one, watch footage from the parks. Many theme parks across here and in Europe, and I'm sure America will do them as well. They like to release POVs, drone footage from the parks, just to give us that excitement for when the theme parks reopen again. I know Polton's Park have done this. I've seen F Telling have done drone footage. I've seen other European parks do drone footage. Alton Towers have released POVs. I know they did the front seat POV of Oblivion, uh, the most recent, uh, was the front seat POV of Oblivion, uh, Alton Towers. So, it's always nice to watch these POVs and these drone footages, just because of the fact that um, they're really nice to watch, and it's nice to sort of remember what those experiences feel like, and of course, it's the closest way we can get to riding them at this point, so... You know, you take every opportunity as it comes, really. And um, I really, really recommend you go and watch those videos across all the social media channels for the parks. Not just YouTube, but I know Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Any kind of social media site that they'll put these videos on, I recommend you go and watch them. Because they're well worth watching to see how beautiful the park looks. The drone footage especially is really good. Because the drone footage has got some really good quality footage. And you can really get a good insight as to how the parks look when empty. So it's a real, it's an interesting opportunity that. So I'd really go and recommend you watching all those footages from POVs, drone footage. And any other kind of footage you can find on here or on other social media channels from all the different theme parks across Europe, America, and here in the UK. So tip number two, make sure you go and keep watching old footage and documentaries. Now it's good to learn about the past of the park, but it's very good to keep an eye on the past. And that's what I like to do. I'm gonna take this as an example. The 1997-98 Blackpool Pleasure Beach documentary. Oh my goodness, that is a brilliant documentary. If you haven't seen it, it's a six-part documentary. It was on UK Horizon, which I think now is now merged with another channel to become UK Gold or UK TV Gold, I think. Something like that. 
Uh, I'm, I'm sure they've merged with another channel to create one of our current channels nowadays. But there was a channel called UK Horizons, and they produced this this documentary called Pleasure Beach, and it was sort of a history of like going around the park and you know checking out these latest projects. There was guest appearances from the likes of uh, Richard Devere and his performing dog Schnorbitz. You know, it was a fantastic documentary. That was the whole sort of origination for the video that we react to, the funny new machine remix video that we reacted to by the guys at Hang Tracks. Um, you know, the remix came from the original clip from episode one from the Ice Arena. You know, it was that's where that's where it originated from. So this documentary, there's ma there's many other documentaries out there as well. Alton Towers Magic Factory, that's a fantastic documentary. Um, there's loads of American ones out there, building a theme park, uh, I think it's called. Uh, I watched that a couple of times recently, and that was a really good documentary. It's only a good seven minutes, the clip that I watched, but it was well worth watching because it made you understand about the parks, and it made you want to get a background knowledge on them. And I'd really recommend that, especially if you're a member of the general public and you're not, re you're not an enthusiast, but you want to know more about these parks. I'd go and recommend those documentaries. Alton Towers Magic Factory, Pleasure Beach... Um, but I'd, t I'd recommend typing Blackpool Pleasure Beach documentary just in case. But I think it's definitely called Pleasure Beach. Uh, the American ones. Uh, there's a Disney one out there as well. There's actually something on Disney Plus at the minute. There's a Walt Disney Imagineering story that I've been interested in watching for a while now. So uh, I'd really recommend that on Disney Plus. Uh, so there's loads of stuff from them. Uh, there's loads of stuff from other people as well. There's uh, small mini documentaries. Uh, from different people on YouTube as well. The Coaster Force documentaries are fantastic. Uh, the Swarm, Peppa Pig World, Saw, Stealth, Corkscrew's Final Day. You know, they were on BBC One on that day, so, you know, it's a big deal. Uh, so, I'd really recommend watching these old documentaries and also old park footage. I've seen loads of footage from the past. I've seen construction updates from Nemesis Subterra back before it even opened, you know, let alone closed, because uh, it's gone now, uh, and I don't know if it's coming back, we don't think it's coming back, so, you know, it's good to remind yourself about these experiences, you know, I did Subterra, it was a fantastic dart ride, but watching it being constructed, I've not watched or seen any pictures or footage from the construction of Subterra since it was actually under construction, since I was an 11 year old kid, watching the updates on what was known then as Nemesis, What Lies Beneath. That was the project name. And then, of course, being announced as Nemesis Subterra. And, I can, and I'm can, and i remembering it now. My first reaction as a kid when the Subterra name was announced was, okay, it's all right. It's all right. It's not good, but it's not great, but it's all right. So, you know, I've got those distinct memories from watching past construction. I remember being, you know, a f I remember being a five-year-old kid and... You know, walking around Alton Towers for the first time. but And I watch old part footage from the likes of 2005, 2006, 7, 8. I remind myself of old pastimes as well. Going back and watching stuff from 1995. There's even a documentary or some kind of part footage or something from 1989. Which is very interesting. So I'd really go and recommend watching old footage and part documentaries and industry documentaries. Because... They are worth watching, especially when we're all under lockdown. Tip number three. Construction on some projects are still going ahead. M construction has halted many, many projects across the world. But there is still construction, testing footage, still going ahead. Trips drill, testing their new coaster. Set or coasters. Saven was testing. Um, we saw, I gave you an update on Mission Kepler at Futuroscope, that is testing. Jersey Devil, that's been going up in construction. We know that Aquaman Powerway has been up for a while. So there's loads of projects that are either up, still constructing. Pleasurewood Hills, for example, they shared something on their Instagram. They got a special delivery from what looks like it's like fencing, like brand new fencing for their log flume transformation into the Water Fun Factory, I think it's called now. So, you know, there's you know, there's, par there's parks and projects in the UK, Europe, America, still constructing these projects and still refurbishing attractions. And I'd really recommend you keep up to date with the park social medias. And I'd recommend you keep, keep up to date with the latest construction. Because it's still so much fun watching this construction from behind your screen. Yes, it would be nice to watch it from the park, but from 
you know, as close as you can get to it, you can still see the construction, you can still see it in front of your eyes, on your screens, and it's still worth watching because it's worth keeping up to date with all these projects because it's well worth seeing these projects come from nothing to something, even during this crisis. They're handling things with care, they're taking in the procedures and the measures, but they're still making sure that nothing distracts them from their essential work of construction. So, you know, it's very it's very interesting to see construction still going ahead with some projects, but, um, you know, on the plus side, it is nice to watch as well. Tip number four, future investment is still getting announced. Now, many, 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 many projects announcements have been delayed. We know the massive one was Dollywood. They were set to announce their largest investment ever. Rumoured to be like a gangster granny ride uh, system. Uh, dark ride themed to a phase two Wildwood Grove. Uh, we saw the surveys about the coasters as well. Uh, so we knew that that announcement wasn't just going to be a Wildwood Grove phase two. We knew it was going to be something more than that. And they could potentially announce a brand new roller coaster. And it, you know, it could be even accommodation. It could be a lot of different things. It could be multiple investments. A new dark ride, a new coaster, new accommodation, any other new attractions. I've always wanted to see Dollywood add one of those rapid rides like Mystic River Falls that's set to open this year at Silver Dollar City. But I think that's going to open in 2021 in my opinion. Or maybe it could open during the Halloween months. Uh, but I do believe that these project announcements are being set back. We know that Universal's Epic Universe, we know construction's been halted on that. However, there were still permits, plans, rumours still coming ahead about different areas. We know that the Fantastic Beasts area may not be its own area. It could, it's potentially going to be a phase three of a Wizarding World of Harry Potter development. So... There's a mix of Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts in that section of Epic Universe, potentially. So there's a real uh, sense of questioning over the Epic Universe project. Um, and other projects as well, we're still asking questions about Six Flags next season, Cedar Fair, Merlin Entertainment's here in the UK, uh, 2021 projects, you know, projects from 2020 getting delayed for another year, um, Halloween events, we know that... Um, they could get cancelled until next year and they might ha not have a Halloween event for the first time in years at all these different parks. However, at the minute, you know, nothing's been said officially, so it's still going ahead as far as we know. So we can still keep speculating on what new mazes could be coming to these events here in the UK and across the world as well. The, the European events for Halloween, Halloween Horror Nights, Fright Fest at Six Flags. I said last year we were going to report on Fright Fest at Six Flags um, when more news gets out about that. So for now, they're going ahead. It might not be, but for now, they're going ahead. So we're treating it as if it's going ahead still. So there's still news updates to look forward to. There's still loads of announcements set to come in the next few months that could get delayed from previous months, or it could be brand new announcements from scratch. Uh, we still have no idea about certain projects. Bush Gardens, Williams Bose, 2021 coaster, rumoured you know people have called it dragon spire like a dragon spiral or something so you know you still got these projects that are still yet to be announced there's still rumors and speculation but they still get to be announced so you know you still wait for that official announcement so we've still got all that to look forward to so there's still a lot of things while during lockdown that we are looking forward to when lockdown is lifted and the parts try and get back to normality as soon as possible so tip number five, my final tip is start your own content. Now, when lockdown first came, I, I I'm not going to say I wasn't, you know, phased by it, but like obviously the primary content on here is theme park news. So it requires me being here, recording videos like this, doing it this style. So in terms of filming videos, apart from doing the vlogs from the parks, which I really wanted to do this year. It's really affected, but it's but in terms of the theme park news updates, it's not really been affected as much. But I know that other channels that primar primarily focus on vlogging, parks and fun fairs, um, vlogs around the world, doing different things and projects. I know they've been affected more than anything. So their cha their channel content has had to change. The side men they had loads of projects in hand, but of course they can't do that now because they're all under lockdown. So they've had to completely change their sort of filming schedule. So it's very interesting to see all these projects and see these content creators. So 
if you're sitting there, if you're bored, if you do something, if you've got a passion for anything, whether it's beauty, fashion, theme parks, gaming, uh, vlogging your everyday life at home, like isolation diaries, start it up. Start it up. I encourage young content creators to start up their own channels. Um, there's a lot of things that I want to do on here um, as part of the channel. Uh, interviews lined up. I want to write a book. Uh, maybe not, a, not a, maybe not a biography, but you know, like a like, like what Joe Sugg did with the uh, username Evie series, like a like a book series. Um, and when the whole lockdown and stuff like that ends and sort of do book signing tours, that would be nice to do. I've always wanted to do, um, an actual tour, like take the channel on tour. So there's loads of these different projects that I've always wanted to do as a YouTuber, whether it don't matter whether it was theme parks or gaming or anything like that. I've always wanted to do this kind of projects where, especially the tour one, I've always wanted to do a tour where I go around the country uh, answer questions, talk about what I love, uh, and share some of my favourite memories, like a real talk show tour. So that's something I've always wanted to do when the channel gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and the audience gets bigger. So, like, and I've said, it, I've said at the beginning of every video, I would recommend sharing your channel with your friends, your family on social media, because I want the channel to grow and I want to do the projects that I would love to do in the future, like the book series, like the tour, like any other projects I could think of, interviews, on park footage, POVs, anything like that. Because this isn't just the theme park news channel, this is all about entertaining people as well, and I want to entertain you guys for years now. So, you know, and I encourage other creators, whatever your passion is, go for it. If you feel, if you've got anxiety, if you feel nervous about doing it, take me as an example. Like, I might look confident on here, but when I sort of thought about doing it in the first place, I was really, really nervous because, you know, I've seen YouTube channels and YouTubers and, you know, it's a big, big risk because you're putting yourself in front of the world's eye. So you've got to be willing to take those risks. I take those risks and look where I am now. I've got um, over 1,000 subs, 1,500 even subs, on the road to 2,000, hopefully gonna grow even more. And you know, I've, I've just stuck at it. That's one of the main things I'd recommend though if you are starting content, stick with it. Don't, you know, give up if you're not getting many subscribers in one go because, you know, this channel didn't grow for a, for a little while and then suddenly it's just grown rapidly but that's because I stuck with it and that's because I kept uploading I would keep uploading because the more you upload the more you'll get noticed and the more subs you'll get and the more confident you'll feel with it and the more filming videos will become part of your element so that's the one thing I'd recommend with this so I really would recommend starting your own content that's my final tip start your own content whatever your passion is start it because I'd really recommend it uh, so there we go. So that is my top five tips and suggestions for what to do under lockdown, how to keep in touch with theme parks and YouTube and things like that. So I'd really recommend you share this video around with people that might want to start content, love theme parks but can't get out there and don't know what to do. I'd recommend sharing this video. If you've got any bonus tips, put them in the comments down below. Uh, and for now, guys, thank you very, very much. The Cedar Fair predictions video will be coming out later today, as well as the Million Entertainment's one tomorrow. Uh, and of course, like I said at the beginning, big shout out to Amadit to Theme Park, Zoe, well done for 1,000 subs, you deserve it, you're such an amazing person, you really do deserve it, and everyone I go recommend checking out the channel, I'll link it at the end of the video with mine, and for now guys, my name is Coast Jal, keep living the coast life, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon, take care guys, have an awesome day.